the design of pavilions is a is a rare opportunity um, that allows sort of an experimentation of um, certain issues that uh, the architect decides to tackle and uh, to, or engage essentially and um, it's an it's an opportunity that you know on one hand could be theoretical on the other hand could really uh, have a physical manifestation in terms of long-term production of of, of uh, architecture and and it allows um, it's it's a bit of a laboratory for uh, new forms of uh, building uh, materials um, a space uh, and many other things I think because it, with with long-term pieces with long-term um, uh, projects you know there is a certain level of uh, rigor that needs to be uh, put into it but I think it's it's actually interesting that one should you know uh, architecture in its temporary temporality uh, and its permanence there should be a we should sort of it should be it's an opportunity to begin to bridge the gap because um, uh, it's interesting to think about architecture as product design sometimes um, uh, and with product design, sometimes you know there is a shelf life to it, which um, I would say you um, its purpose it's built for that purpose and it's built to serve a certain time and it's a certain agenda. Uh, and uh, after which you can also think about what the the values, the right values that have that you've um, uh, let's say learned from that short period into projects that have much more permanence uh, within them. Crafts, uh, arts, arts and crafts uh, remain very important uh, aspects of architecture and uh, perhaps we have, to, you know, uh, notions of crafts back in, you know, uh, how, long, how long ago was this published? In 1896, uh, the first volume is very different from what we do now. It's a different type of craftsmanship. Uh, but still, uh, arts and crafts remain uh, important um, skills in articulating form, space, materials in architecture. And uh, we have maybe different aesthetic uh, values now and, and different uh, uh, ways of achieving materials and, and solutions. But uh, essentially, you know, arts and crafts remain an integral part of architecture. What we've done here, for instance, this is a 17th century uh, neoclassical temple, uh, we, which we've essentially just learned from. Uh, we became very interested in the form and the space and the void. And, uh, and uh, what we did was to take what we learned and com completely turn it over to produce a new type of uh, form and express it in a new material. Uh, we've used uh, the same material on the outside, but a totally different uh, cr technique and, uh, and, and craft on the inside, which is a sort of a soft finish to heighten the perception of the space. But as you can see, the craftsmanship that went into the production of that one is very different from this. Uh, so it's, this is a contemporary version of uh, the uh, 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 old uh, building. It's important to begin to look at what people do, what, you know, not just uh, architects that are completely trained, but, um, uh, you know, the local trades, local craftsmen, the local the artists in the city, you know. And uh, although this, this is a building that was designed by uh, William Kent, uh, and our, you know, a trained profession, but uh, the, the craftsmanship and the thought that went into it is also from people that worked in you know, uh, in the environment uh, at the time. And uh, um, so for me, that's also a source of inspiration. Like, how do you, um, how do you look at what is in existence and use that as a source of inspiration for today, as opposed to the need to completely reinvent uh, the wheel? I think the challenge with 
with uh, upgrading slums is, is, is first of all a very complex one. It's not only about architecture, it's, you know, it's multiple folds. And um, you know, there, there are all kinds of disciplines that need to, be, that need to participate in that, act, in that uh, process. And, uh, but uh, as an architect, I think we need to, uh, as architects, engage that uh, subject, you know, um, it's probably important to uh, really think about what the actual needs are and see how, um, in a way, the uh, capacity to generate form uh, triggers or catalyzes a certain sort of change uh, to uh, enable uh, the key, let's say, uh, of, um, uh, players or other um, uh, important uh, um, vectors that would trigger the change within this sort of environment. So architecture in that sense is only a catalyst. It's not really, doesn't have to be about the structure itself. It's really about the impact that you're, we're, we're looking at. And for me, that's the key thing. You know, how do you uh, use form to, to catalyze change uh, that has uh, impact? And um, that's perhaps uh, an important uh, key to tackling um, areas that are impoverished. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I always refer to one of uh, a quote by uh, um, the former mayor of Maidane, who said uh, that we will build our most beautiful buildings in our poorest neighborhoods. I think that's uh, very inspiring. Uh, because he, it shows that he understands the impact of uh, a certain f form just to trigger uh, change. The school has been, uh, the structure has actually been, uh, uh, we've moved the students out because um, it's, it was a temporary structure anyway and it's, uh, the stu students used it for a while and uh, we've, we're actually demobilizing that structure. Uh, to uh, have a new, the, the newer version there. I'm, I'm very grateful to Architecture Review and kind of looking at this cover again in, from 1896. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually quite an honor to have been on the cover of, of the magazine that has such uh, uh, heritage and history. Uh, and uh, and these, these have been important um, let's say, moments where uh, it's brought this, this right type of attention uh, and the right type of public interest to um, a problem which required, uh, let's say, you know, to, which required the government's attention. And uh, since that was uh, several years ago, and uh, uh, two years ago, the government uh, actually decided that they will uh, look into rehabilitating or regenerating the community as a water-based community, which is an important change from uh, some of the ideas that they had uh, uh, before. Um, and uh, the school was recognized as a potential prototype for uh, developing the community. Um, so we've, uh, the school has served that purpose and we've uh, again, had the opportunity in Venice this year to produce a second iteration, which is a much better version. We've, you know, um, we've actually uh, improved on all the challenges that we had in the first one, or the, you know, which was really a prototype, a temporary prototype. Yeah, and now we're uh, we have a much uh, better and stronger and uh, uh, faster to build iteration. These are important uh, challenges, you know, and these are important uh, issues, uh, uh, humanitarian issues and, let's say, challenges of poverty. Uh, but uh, um, I think, on one hand, th these are, for me, opportunities not to produce architecture that is, uh, in a way, e extremely, it's only about this sort of empathy and it's... Uh, uh, you know, it shows that there's no vision, there's no real thrust to it. I think these are opportunities to create uh, something really, really uh, remarkable. 
At the same time, I also think you know the continent is also a place that is so diverse that you uh, there that also offers opportunities to do uh, bigger buildings that offers opportunities to do uh, much more. Um, uh, sophisticated, um, provide sophisticated solutions. Uh, at the same time, thinking about the relevant um, uh, inputs to to ensure that the sophistication remains uh, viable on a long-term basis.